Okay, Jack. Uh, over to you. So today I'm going to talk about um, standing lives and standing lives. Um, what they are and how to um, treat them. Um, so, what is a standing wave? Um, <laughs> standing wave is when um, the length of a wave fits up the room perfectly. So, whether that be in a full cycle or two cycles or a half. So, basically, if you've got one wall here and another wall here, then it would take a full cycle to get to the other wall, and that would fit perfectly. Um, the problem because it means um, that specific frequency is going to amplify. Um, and it will bounce back off the wall and go back in itself and yeah, amplify itself. Now, you need to be in a full cycle, be in a half cycle, so that could be your wall and it would just do a full loop. It could be that your sound wave does that and it would just do the same thing. So, first of all, we need to work out what your problem frequency is going to be. Um, and to do that, there's a really basic uh, equation. Um, so, and it looks a little bit like this, so you've got P, and then you have frequency, and you have a little funny one called lambda, which is uh, within the Greek alphabet, um, and this will stand for like, there's your equation. Um, now, basically, we want to work out what the frequency is that we've got the problem. So we've got velocity, so you've got which is um, the speed of sound, so that will be measured in uh, metres per second. So we know that the speed of sound, usually at 20 degrees, which is a kind of average temperature of a room, um, will be 344 metres per second. Um, and we've got, um, and because we know the size of our room by using a tape measure, we can find out the, uh, the length of the sound wave or the problem 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 length that we're going to need to deal with. Um, so this is lambda. And we're going to say this one is six meters for instance. So we've got a six meters by six, we'll do it easy because just for argument's sake, we've got a six by, by six room. Um, so this is going to be six meters. So when using this equation, if you know the frequency and you know the velocity, because the velocity barely changes, rarely changes unless you're outside or in a colder place or a warmer place, um, <coughs> this really changes. So you can, to you, as long as you've got two of these, you can work them out. So if you've got um, the velocity, which is 344 meters per second, you would divide that by the length of your room. So we do 344 divided by six, which I have written down somewhere. I'll do a quick calculation. Is unless anyone knows off the top of their heads. Six meters is fifty seven point three three. So that that divided by that would be fifty seven point three three. Now you don't get a point three of a of a frequency. So we're just gonna run this down to fifty seven. So our problem frequency in a full cycle is gonna be fifty seven hertz. There you go. Um so we know that at 57 hertz we're going to have an issue um, and what you can do then is work out what we're going to have at a half cycle so if you half that then you're going to get uh, divided by 2 equals 28.6 28 so we'll run that up to 27 hertz so we've got a problem at 27 hertz uh, and then we, if you add those two together then you would get 27 and 57 84 hertz so so on and so forth you can keep adding 27 to it to get how many cycles you and that's going to equal your, your problem frequencies that you're going to encounter when um, in, in, a, in a room which you're trying to acoustically treat so yeah as long as you've got these two at least two of the uh, of the um, what these equal then you can work out what the uh, what the frequency will be um, and you can go from there. So we know that our problem is going to be at 57 hertz, 27 hertz, 84, so on and so forth. Um, 
and that could look like well this one's gonna look like if you've got your this is our walls so this one's gonna look like that this one's gonna look like that and this one's gonna look like that with within your room if that was six minutes um, <coughs> um now you can you, there's loads of different ways to treat this um, I'm just going to go into detail today about um, how to treat the low end, so we need to use something called a base trap. Um, base traps tend to be, a, I'll rub this out because I might need, base traps tend to be a, um, a bit of wood, because wood's got a very high density um, and is quite good at reflecting sound waves. Um, um, it's, it's really dense and very good to do it. So what you do is you would have a bit on, if this was your wall, you would have a bit of wood here, which would represent your base trap, and then that would stick to the wall. Uh, and this gap in between the wall and the base trap would be what would trap the low end frequency. Now, um, there's one main way of working that out, um, <coughs> and you can work out the size of your base trap, but going to really quickly go into detail about how to work out the what distance it needs to be to capture the frequency that is your problem. So if you've got 57 hertz and there's no point in trying to treat it for 30 hertz, um, although it'll probably manage to do it the same anyway. Um, so it's a really basic equation we use to work this out as well. And it looks like this, so D equals 170. Square that, and we put that over n. Now, d equals the depth between the wall and your base trap, or between the wood. Um, m equals density, which is how how dense the wood is. Now, usually that's going to be around not point not so that's like not point seven. Tend to be a bit of a constant, um, and then f is your frequency. So, if we know the answer to m, because that's going to be 0 0.74. So, well, we'll start this again. We put d equals 170 over our frequency. So, our frequency, our trouble frequency is 57, uh, and we'll put that in brackets. I'll square that. And then that's going to go over 0.74. So to work, work that out really quickly, so we've got 170 divided by 57 equals 2.98. Then we're going to square that, which works out to be 8.89. And then we're going to divide that by 0.74, which means that. The, the answer comes to 12.02, and that's in <coughs> centimetres, I do believe. Um, so that means that the depth between your wood and your wall, so this gap here, is going to be 12 centimetres, which is what's going to manage to treat that specific frequency. Um, now, if you did it for lots of other frequencies, you'll probably m find that it will manage to trap a lot of other frequencies as well. So if you've got lots of frequencies together, then it will cover quite a broad spectrum of that. Um, but yeah, that's how you would work out a bass trap. That's about as far as I got, I'm afraid. Um, I know it's a little bit short, um, but I got a little bit stuck when it comes to diffusion. So I thought it's best to, not, instead of explaining that wrong, then explain it that. But yeah, standing waves. It's a good thing to try and treat it because obviously if you're in, in if you're mixing in a room and you want to get as true sound as possible, then you're not going to want to have your sound waves flying all over the place to give you. Yeah, thank you.